afternoon and welcome to Markets Today. I'm your host, Mbitha Mwema. A very exciting midweek for this particular day. We are talking about the Red Cup repeal. A couple of things happened yesterday. Now, the MPs were supposed to take a vote on the Finance Committee's, um, rather, the Finance Committee proposals. The Finance Committee had accommodated the executive reservations with regards to a total Red Cup repeal. However, the Finance Committee did come and say, over and above having a total Red Cup repeal, let this repeal only affect future loans and not existing loans. Now, yesterday was a very interesting day in Parliament. It looks like this motion was passed, but this is the thing that's happening. We are unsure and we are yet to see the handset or the order paper detailing the exact decision that the Speaker accepted, uh, rather accepted or and let go through. There was a lot of unruliness in Parliament yesterday with a lot of the nays saying that it was an unfair decision, there was not sufficient quorum, really a lot of things happening. But the Speaker who holds a mandate on behalf of the MPs did say that the motion was passed. Now, in this confusion, the question is, was the president's motion passed, which reads a total rate cap repeal for all existing loan facilities in Kenya, or was it B, what the finance committee had actually proposed, a rate cap repeal for future loans, for new loans, meaning that existing loans still remain within the rate cap um, environment? If, if nothing else, if any amendment is to be made, it should be made looking lower, rather than offering lower rates. The jury is still out on that, but suddenly this is a station that you need to be watching to get a sense of what that means and what decision will actually be articulated by the speaker on behalf of the uh, parliamentarians. That said, we have seen a slight rally today on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. There's a lot of demand for the banks, no supply certainly. The top mover, KCB, 6.5% up on the day. The top traded counter, Cooperative Bank, 7.2 million shares traded. Now, demand continues. There's no supply. It's still an, uh, not very clear in the investment community whether new loans will be affected or it's the existing loan portfolio of all, I mean, the existing portfolio of all loans in Kenya. If it's the latter, it's certainly a huge positive for the entire banking industry. If it's not for the, if it's only for the new loans and this has already been priced in, we don't expect too much upside. Should you be buying? Should you be selling? Let's listen to what the CEO of KCB Group, Mr. Joshua Oigara, had to say with regards to the execution and the implementation of the decision by the parliamentarians. All right, so our graphics team to put that out. There it is. Here you have Mr. Joshua Oigara articulating what, or rather giving us a sense of what to expect. He does recognize the fact that the macroeconomic environment is not as robust as it was earlier in earlier years. In that said, the company, rather KCB Group, has also issued a press statement. In the press, they do say that they are excited about the total rate cap repeal. They're not very clear on whether it's a total rate cap repeal for all the loans or for new loans. However, they do say that they expect credit to start flowing to the SME sector. Their pricing will be a risk-based pricing model. This has been expected, has been championed by the Kenya Bankers Association, is nothing new. For the SMEs, KCB has actually said that they could be priced 2 to 3 percentage points higher than your regular customer to be able to reflect the risk associated with this particular segment of the economy. That means that from 13%, maybe expect the loan pricing for the SME sector or maybe even the private sector to move from 13% to about 18% give or take. Now, what does this mean for us? Should you be buying these stocks? Should you be exiting these stocks? What does it mean for us at a macro level? We are joined in studio by Mr. Abraham Kamau. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Miradi Capital. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kamau. Thank you very much. What are your thoughts? Did you watch yesterday's parliamentary sessions? What are your initial thoughts on this? I think for, for me, um, the moment the, the president dissented, I, I think I could tell where this was going. And I think eventually when the dust settles, I think the, the, the red cap is gone. It's just a question of uh, the details. Are, are we going to do it going forward or are we going to do it retrospectively? Exactly. That's where the debate is at now. 
But whichever way, the, the rate cap is gone. So which means now we are in a free market economy, as, we, as some of you put it. But if, if we go backwards, why did we put the rate cap in? We put the rate cap in so that, in fact, what they were saying, if you, look at the, if you look at the object of that law, was that to make credit affordable. Now, in their, in, in their quest to make it affordable, they restricted its access. Because remember, in any economy, or in any, yeah, in any economy, when you, when you restrict supply, either by price or by quantity, in this case, it was by price. Okay. And if you look at the, if you look at the supply curve, more is, dem more is supplied at a higher price. If you look at the demand curve, uh, more, is de more is demanded when the price is down. Yes. Now, if you cap, if you cap the, the price at 14, 13% where it was now, it means that at that price, the supplier was only, was only willing to supply Y amount of credit. And if, on the demand side as well, the, 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 there, was, the, there was an X. So, that, that so there's actually a gap between yeah, a gap. both now, sides, now, demand so and now, supply. Yeah, from, from now, what, whatever supply, the supply capped at, at that supply. So anything above that, because the economy was still there, all those guys now are left at the mercy of a black market because the demand is still there. And hence the Shylocks. Yes, the Shylocks. And, and, and that's why. <laughs> so in any, whenever you restrict, that's what happens. And again, it, it comes down to trying to legislate an economic problem. You can see that what, what we have got, come back full circle with all the messes. Because if, if something is an economic problem, it requires an economic solution. Because law cannot solve an economic problem. Okay. So, so, so ultimately now we are back to that. But the question is, you know, by reverting back to a free market economy, we have not solved the problem that caused us to put, put, a, put this law in the first place. That is still there. The issue of access and pricing. Obviously, that that question nobody. But has maybe answered. maybe that's tested because Abraham yeah. last week Safaricom did announce its first half results. Yeah. It has extended f on for lease 140 billion. I think yeah. that's in six or eight months. Yes. It's made 1.3 billion mm. from this. Mm. 140 billion in credit. That that's true, but which is not yeah, priced so, within so, the so, cap so, environment. So you see now, in if you look at those numbers, they again they they support what we are saying, in that people prioritize access to price. Because th that is easily accessible, they can get it. But look at what, what price, they're talking about 7.5, 8% per month. So if you now analyze, you can see what you're talking about. So the question of affordability has not been solved. We've we just been talking about access, access at the expense of, of pricing. So the government, whatever they wanted to achieve has not been achieved. So the element of pricing can only be achieved if we if we intervene through the monetary policy. Monetary policy. Yes, Walk us monetary. through, because the, the reservations, or rather when the president's memorandum came back to yes, parliament, yes. it did say that central bank had become more or less ineffective with, its, with regards to its monetary signaling, monetary policy yes, signaling, and yes. you know what, what messaging that it's able to package to the financial markets. Yes. And that was one of the key things that they wanted to actually now remove the rate cap. Yes. What does that mean for the central bank benchmark rate and the decision that they expect to take later on in this month? You see, the one thing we shall, we shall never know is that almost du the entire duration of the rate cap I think, the, I think the, 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 the CBR moved only one point, from 10 to 9, in the entire duration of this law. So we will not know what would have happened if they had driven that rate down. Maybe it would have made this law work. Mm -hmm. Two, by keeping it at 9 for so long, they rendered that tool impotent. Because it reached a point where nobody bothered what they said, because people expected. And people, everybody used to predict it would be 9, and sure enough, and, and it still never 9. Moves. So, so now, that, now that that rate is not gone, now this is the tool that we must look upon to regulate this, to, to keep people in check. Because the, but we will not expect banks to depart from that. Yes, now they can do whatever they want. But the, morally, the, 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 be, if, if we start driving down the rate, the, the, the CBR rate, it will not, because banks, are, 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 they, they are driven by profit. But at the same time, if it becomes unprofitable to go the route of putting money in, 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 in government paper, then they have no choice than to go the other way. Okay. Of credit because the assets are only either in, either in government paper or in, or in debt. In debt. Yes. Okay. I, I like the element that you're bringing in that um, should the banks behave morally. Yes. We have just seen the statement from Mr. Joshua Olgara, yes. who's yes. the CEO of yes. Yes. KCB Bank. Yes. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? You see, to be honest, I, I don't think banks owe us any moral duty. No, they don't owe us any moral duty. They're here to make money, and they make it in, in how, how they know best. 
because, so, so with that in mind, we should have interventions to make sure that they do not go overboard. Because right now, even if the price is at 90, if, even to move two percentage points, for the kind of book, so books these guys run, it's, it's substantive. Yes. It's very, very substantive. And don't forget, if you look at most of these businesses, the IRRs are, 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 are way below even, even the 14 we're talking about. So mm -hmm. when you take it to 18, nobody, you, you cannot run a business on credit. So that affordability, the, that objective, we need to relook really again. So are you saying yes. that, okay, fine, this is a good move yes. because now there could be accessibility, but then we've only focused on the capital holders of this debt. Yes. Are you in a way saying that the demand for credit would not be sufficient to take this up, meaning that we're probably being over-optimistic or overly optimistic with regards to the opportunity the banks pretend? You see, you see the way things are standing now, there's no motivation for banks to lend tomorrow. Because the options of going to government repair is still open. Mm -hmm. So wh why should they? Okay. Yeah, because for them, they, they're here to make money. That is uh, w what we need to understand and to make it in the easiest way possible. Right now, the easiest way to make money is to take it from depositors and put it in government paper. So we have to start disincentivizing dis this government paper on one hand through monetary policy. And, and, and that has been done before. Okay. So it has been done before. So it, it, it's not something we are trying out. It's something that has been done, and the economy actually did very well during that time. But what, what's going to happen? Because now, I, I mean, it's important for us to look at the past to see where we are at yes, today. Yes, yes. But today we're in a space where whether the total, I mean, the rate cap repeal applies to new loans or not. Yes. I mean, we have had uh, sentiments with that, that allude to the fact that really it's all new loans. Because since yes. the rate cap came, yes. loans have been two years, one year, yes. etc. So yes. really the existing stock of loans is almost mm. maturing, at least within one year. Yes. So then the rate cap repeal means that's a new environment. So what does that mean for us? Let's, let's start at a, at a business level, at an individual level, at a household level. Yes. What does that mean? What's the immediate impact? For, okay, fine. For the, for the household or for the SME for that matter, yes, we now have a chance to test the banks as to whether they were honest. That the reason they're not lending to us is because the price is not right. Let's see if access improves, even at a higher price. That, that's number one. Number two, for, for banks, I think they need to think hard and fast. That the environment they are in, unless they, they change, they may not make money going forward. Because if government goes the route, and which I suspect they will. Which route is this? The, the route of, of disincentivizing government paper and, 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 and trying to, have to, to, to lower the yields on government paper, to drive money towards, remember. So then the government, in a way, stops, stops demanding or reduces its demand for it, domestic It, it has to reduce because, for, you know, for, for, for an economy to grow, one of the factors that, that, that spy economy is access to credit. Because when you have more money in your pocket, you demand more. And, and, and remember, what you are going through is, 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 is a slowdown. You can see what's happening. Everybody's laying off. Yes, that's what I'm asking. Yes, if, yes. if it's a slowdown, yes. okay, the rationale is extend credit to the SME. Yes. Which, it, it's fine. Whether it will happen or not, is, it's, it's okay. yet to be tested. Yes. But my question is, you're saying there is a slowdown in the economy. It is, yes. So in a way, we can understand that the government wants to enhance demand, aggregate it, demand. Yes, exactly. It wants a more economic activity yes. to happen yes. outside of government spending. Yes. That, that, that rationale, I mean, it's, it's what they're trying to do. Now the question is, mm. you are an economist. Yes. The way the economy is today, you yes. do interact with businesses, with SMEs, mm. big corporates, people on the ground, the yes. Monanchi. Yes. <clears throat> can the Monanchi afford credit at a higher level? Can they benefit from it? Can we actually expect to see economic growth from the private sector on the, based on this move? Actually, if you, you, you hit the nail on the head. And, and, and you see, government was, was spot on when they were starting to do that law. The issue was affordability. Because it's, it's all about business. Your, it's, it's about your IRR, mm -hmm. your internal rate of return, and what your business can take as a cost to credit. Yes. To me, the, the, the moment you... If, even at current 14, some of them could not make money. You see, the, the way it is. Because we, we, we had this feeling that this thing could be lower. So you're right. If th th There's a point to which credit becomes too expensive. But then again, if you look at it on the flip side, a lot of business SMEs now had been running on these very expensive loans. Okay, so this is yeah, the, so been, the so, mobile so, lending, yeah, so, yeah, mobile the lending short platforms, short term So okay. it means somehow they figured it out. So even if they went to 18, 19, 20, analyzed, it's still so much cheaper as compared to what the... the so then it's, the, it's the, an the, overall it's positive. Overall. But the, the, the question comes, are we assuming because the red cap has been moved, the bank's willingness to lend has gone up? I, I think it will be there because you ask, you're bringing in a yes. couple of things. What yes. you're saying is today a bank, mm. if I'm seated in the Treasury Department, yes. give your money to the government of Kenya yes. or give it to Mbithes? Yes. 
Yes, right? th th those are the options. Those are the options. Yes. So before you're like, I don't want to deal with Mbitho, I don't want to deal with Abraham yes, yes, in, yes. That, uh, in that regard because too much risk, mm. give it to the government. Yes. But then you're saying that the government could easily reduce its yes. reliance on domestic debt. Yes. So it's either I'll be seated with money at 0%. Which you can't. Or mm. I have to find a way to price yes. it yes. to Mbitho, which is what Joshua Gary say, we can price it to the SMEs, but it will be probably 2 to 3 percentage points higher. Which is saying, we yes. will go to 20 percent, but... Yes. In the meantime, in the short term, expect 18% if you are to be able to access this yes, credit. Yes, yes. And then maybe with a lot of other caveats, yes. right? For me, if, if, if the access improves, then I think price will be secondary. Because I think this economy has been clamoring for credit. And also you see this proliferation of this apps, some of them are lending at ridiculous rates. Okay, yes. fair enough. Yeah. Let's, let's take a quick break. The Nairobi Stock Exchange is closed. Look out for the closing bell. We will be back shortly. What sets you out from the rest? What makes you stand out? Get the most outstanding and credible business information. Only on Metropole TV, Kenya's first business channel. Focus of body and mind is crucial for a productive day. Work on the obliques. We look at trends that affect your business day. Who has a bad's eye view of the whole economy? These are things that the government should be able to spell out for Kenyans. An in-depth analysis of the markets. Markets have been very fearful. Employ the capital into, into investment opportunities. Business headlines covered extensively. Inspire the whole spectrum of entrepreneurs. I maneuvered in the harsh economies and all that. With financial and business literacy in a language easy to understand. At the simplest form, contracts. The creation of the human mind. As we look at the boss lady in her element as a woman and a boss. That women can have access. As we journey you through farms and produce markets. This is money. Taking a breather and even in that, learn a thing or two. Global map of growth rates. Taking a look at the business of entertainment. Movies, fashion, beauty. Following the money in sports. Then you widen your stance. Before switching off our mics and let you have your say. The economy is undergoing a serious hardship. Looking at technology as it affects your day-to-day -day business. The customer will get notification. This is Metropole TV. It's 
Okay, that is Mr. Joshua Oigara, who is the Chief Executive Officer for KCB Group. He's actually confirmed that the total rate cap repeal actually applies to new loans, at least in his sentiments. He did say that don't expect existing loans to be repriced tomorrow. However, the company also passed out, issued out a press statement earlier in the day, saying yes, they expect to see credit now flowing to the SME sector, expect it to be two or three percentage points more expensive than where we currently are. We are joined in studio by Mr. Abraham Kamau, who is is the CEO of Miradi Capital. Abraham, yeah. before we went on break, we were yeah. talking about accessibility and affordability of yes, this credit. Yes, yes. Now, we are saying the hurdle neck of accessibility, in theory, has more or less yes, been, yes. been confronted. Yes, yes. Assume that is successful. Yes. What does that mean for the economy today? If, uh, if, if there's a drastic change in, in access, then the game becomes pure price. Okay. Uh, but, and by price, I mean everything loaded in. And, uh, and you can see there's, there's been a lot of effort in, in, in having banks disclose not, not just the interest rate but whatever is hidden charges. Okay. So then now the game will move there. Now SMEs as well. Yes. Okay. Interestingly, just let me just give a, a highlight. We forgot to mention this. His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta earlier today did officially launch the Starwi Loans, which is a consortium of Kenyan banks willing to extend credit to the SME sector. Now this was launched in collaboration with the Kenya Bankers Association as well as the Central Bank of Kenya. However, NCBA was spearheading it from the banking front. This was a solution that had been fronted earlier in the year by Central Bank of Kenya to facilitate access to credit, I mean of credit to the SMEs using the mobile banking platform. SMEs were unable to access sufficient credit with the loan apps, actually only giving 2,500 per user. The Starwi app was supposed to extend up to 250,000 shillings to SMEs and allow them to access this financing for their businesses. So far, we have a, a, a figure of about 10 billion shillings that has been put aside for SMEs at a price of about 9%, single-digit numbers to be extended to the SMEs. It's suddenly a positive for the SMEs and a way of the executive saying over and above the rate cap, they are putting their skin to the game and they want to actively mm. start engaging the <coughs> SMEs. We continue with the conversation yes. because you are saying that SMEs need to be able to access the credit. Yes. If they go to the banks today, they'll access it at maybe 18%, yes. but Starwi is going to extend the same credit at 9%. I mean, there's already a mismatch in prices. Yes, yes. You see, I, th I think the government is trying to put in, it's, it's trying to show the lead. But you see, for them to, 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 to control price or, or rather lead in price, they would need to put more stock. Because, because you, you can imagine whatever stock they're putting in still cannot make impact. But the good thing, they're, they're showing direction. And they're actually also demonstrating, which is the most important thing, that it is actually feasible. It can be done. It can be done. It that that, be that done. is the most important statement. Okay. And see, for that, it, 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 it will make anybody doing higher look bad. Okay. So, so, so maybe in that direction, they might be able to pull people. Because people will feel immoral that somebody's been doing it at 9 and still making money, and me, I'm doing it at 18. What excuse do I have? Okay, but we're yeah. still a care capitalist nation. We no, have we been are. told that but, uh, see, man uh, eat man society. It's a man eat man society, but <laughs> but the government actually is, is is showing that this this can be done. Yes. And and there are no substitutes. So that's a, that's a positive yes, move, at very least positive. In, in terms of showing face and saying we are here. Yes. We are putting our skin in the game. Yes. It can be done. We can yes. prove that it can be yes, done. Yes. So then we don't expect you to be pricing credit at twenty percent. Yes. Okay, fine. So in other words. 
the economy was becoming a bit unbearable. There was no liquidity. Yes. Having liquidity and access to credit is certainly a huge positive. From an economist uh, perspective, do, do we expect an improvement in GDP growth, that's the gross domestic product, mm. in GDP per capita? Do you expect the consumer, the normal Kenyan uh, mwananchi, to actually feel better from these instances of access to liquidity in the next two to three years? Yes. You see, when, when liquidity improves, what will happen is there will also be a marginal increase in, in inflation. And, 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 and you know, for, 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 for any producer, when, when, when there's a marginal increase in, in inflation, is that, that is the incentive to, to produce. So what will happen, there'll be a spa because there, there's more money in the pocket. So the, the economy should grow. And, and, and I believe it will grow, both from the side of demand and also now the suppliers, the, the SMEs also will have money to produce. So I think the, the net effect of all this is a GDP growth. But the question is, at what price? Abraham, will you take a loan tomorrow? Personally, I'll, I'll wait and see. you wait and see. I'll wait and see, first of all, what, how, how, how this new regime looks like. Because yes. there, are, there are still a lot of unknowns. Everybody is, is, is holding their breath. People, because of the history of banks, we will not trust them. So I think we need to give them time. And let's see if, if, if they'll keep to their word or, or their spots will show again. Will you invest in the banking stocks then? For me, I would not, no, not now. Not now. Not now, because for, for now, you see, I may be entering and I should be exiting or exactly. vice versa. So Actually, I, I and, for now, and for now, I, I really can't put my finger on it. Okay. Yeah. Final question. You do run a business. You are chief executive officer. Yes. Based on the decisions that we have had coming through the last yes. two weeks, yes. will you expand the capacity in your team? Will you ec enhance your working capital? Be do you see opportunities based I on see these decisions? This decision for sure, if nothing else, has disrupted the economy. Okay. So, and with disruption comes growth. All right. In whatever form it comes. In whatever form. So for me, as, as, a, as an investor or, or as a business person, I, w I will want to have capacity because something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. And, and, and something good is going so to happen. So you're excited? Yes, I'm, I'm excited in, in as much as I do not know, but I'm excited that something is good. Because you see, also if you're on the floor, I mean you can't go any lower. Yes. Yeah, the only way is up. Exactly. Yes. Okay, thank yeah. you so much for your time. Mm. There you have it. A couple of things happening. First and foremost, banks are already trading up. There's absolutely no supply for demand on the stock exchange. Cooperative, the best performer with regards to volume, 7.2 million shares traded. KCB, best performer on price. It's up almost 7% over the day. We continue to see a lot of demand based on the rate cap decision. Second thing that you need to pay attention to, we have just had a clip of Mr. Joshua Oigara talking about the fact that the total rate cap repeal will only affect new loans and existing loans will continue to be priced in the current regime. He's also very positive with regards to extending credit to the SMEs. They may have to pay two to three percentage points higher than expected. That is about 18% give or take. The final thing, His Excellency, President Uhuru Kenyatta, is also very bullish on the SME sector. While earlier today he did launch the Stawi app, where SMEs can be able to access credit of maybe up to 250,000 shillings on the mobile applications. NCBA is spearheading this. About 10 billion shillings has been set aside for this particular sector. What are we saying? If you're watching markets today, you're certainly wanting to hear our views on the stocks. We expect a rally of the banking stocks. There's still a lot of uh, moving parts with regards to the Kenyan banks. I would say if it keeps going up, we expect to see a lot of profit taking. In other words, we expect to see people beginning to sell if it goes up any more from this point in time as we now begin to figure out, can the economy actually afford or rather can it have, does it have the capacity to absorb this extra demand for credit? Can the economy grow thereafter? But that said, Mr. Abraham has told us he's ready. Disruption brings or begets um, growth opportunities. So he's ready to enhance his working capital. Perhaps if you're looking for a job, he will be the person to speak to. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. See you once again tomorrow. Good afternoon.